In this video I'm going to show you how to create this topo solid element in Revit 2024. This is an example from my residential design textbook which I've just recently updated for Revit 2024. If you take a quick look at what we have here already you can see there's a single topo solid and then there's two subdivision elements and then if I select the topo solid and isolate the element you can see there's also a cutout so with no building pad available with this workflow I had to create an in-place mass and then use the cut command so this is a slab on grade and the slab itself cuts into the earth a bit and without the building pad one thing that's a little bit unfortunate then is there's no scenario where the ground extends itself up to the underside of the pad like it did when you set the elevation of the building pad above all of the adjacent surface you'd get this sort of plateau scenario so that doesn't happen here if we look at this in the site plan we select it and again because this is essentially the floor object in Revit now we have these uh, options to modify shape editing options so modify sub elements and then we'll see the points that have been placed so minus one foot six around the perimeter and then there's a garage entrance so we have to have that right at zero this is all relative to level one if i hit escape you notice we're in the site plan but all plans have an associated level and this one is first floor so let's go ahead and delete this object and start from scratch. So on the Massing and Site tab, we click the Topo Solid command. We have some options here, and basically the workflow is, is that you create the mass object first. So you would create the perimeter of the site and then finish wants to know about extending some walls to this element so i'm going to tell it not to do that and at a quick pass then we have the simple floor object that's created and aligned with level one the only part of any of this that should be aligned with the floor level is here at the garage entrance everything else is going to be set down one and a half feet around the perimeter of the building and two and a half feet at the outer edge. So there's two ways of approaching managing the elevation of everything. If we were to just start adding points now that are lower than this current thing, we'll get some errors, which I'm going to show you, because the points can't go lower than the thickness. And then if we set this entire thing down to the lowest point on the site, then we won't get that error. However, we do want to add thickness to this topo solid just to make it look better in 3D views and, and show up properly with a, enough depth in sections to be below the foundations. And I'm going to select this whole thing and move it down minus two foot six. And now when I go back to the plan view and click to add a point, so even though I changed it to zero and it was minus one foot six, it only seems to want to put the point on the surface that's already there. So now, and I hit escape too many times, so I have to go back and modify sub element. So I'll select this and then change this to minus one foot six. So now we have one point, and because this is a triangulated surface, which even in AutoCAD Civil 3D, that you're always working in the context of a triangulated surface. Just it gets more refined as you add more points. So I'm going to go back to add points. And you can see that the elevation is changing because it's trying to put the point on this surface. So essentially you have to add the points and then select them and modify their elevation. So I'm going to switch into modify sub elements. 
I'm going to copy that to the clipboard and then I'll just work my way around and edit all of these to be minus one foot six. So unfortunately you can't copy these points. I'm going to add two more points somewhere in this area where the garage door is. I'm going to change that to zero. And then I'll hit modify it to finish. And then if we go look at this in 3D, you can see we basically have what we want. The ground slopes up at the garage doors. It's lower on the rest of the building. There'll be an exterior set of stairs and a landing here at the main entrance. Um, there is something uh, over here where things are a little bit kind of sharp in terms of contours. So we might go back and add a few points to kind of smooth that out. And then we can add thickness to this. So I'm going to go to Edit Type, Edit Structure, going back to that 10 foot value that I had at the beginning. There's a message here about the topo solid, and this would be the basement floor is now overlapping. Because the topo solid is actually a solid, it doesn't automatically get obscured by foundation walls and floor slabs that happen to overlap it. So if I go to a section, actually I'll go to a building section, you can see that the earth goes right through the basement, just like it would with a topo surface in previous versions of Revit. However, it also obscures the foundation wall, so there's no automatic kind of correcting this situation. We'll have to ultimately use the cut command to make this work. So our next step is to add an in-place mass that will cut out the topo solid inside the building. And just like the building pad, you can decide whether you want to have the line on the inside of the foundation wall or the outside. I'm going to go with the inside in this example. So we'll go to the basement floor plan. On the massing in site tab, I'm going to start an in-place mass. You have to give it a name, so you could call it something like basement void. I'm just going to leave it at the default name. And then I'm going to use the the line tool to just follow around the inside here. I could have used the pick lines tool as well. So we have this outline created and then I'm going to create a void form. So not a solid form but a void form. And then if I go to... I'll go back to my section and I'll pull this down. This can be above the top of the topo solid. It'll cut it just fine. I'm going to use a cut command and I'm going to pick the void and the topo solid and then finish. So the warning here is just saying there's no solid objects in the family but that's fine. We have a void in the family that's cutting something outside of the family. So right now we have a good representation if I isolate this real quick of the basement area but like I mentioned we have to use the cut command to cut the topo solid away from the foundation wall. So we'll go to the modify tab we'll select the cut command and you only have to do this once for this foundation wall and the topo solid. But you have to do it for every element one time. So the strip footing. 
and of course that's only what you can see in this section. So if you go to another section, obviously there's different walls and different sections. So this part is a little tedious, but it's not too bad. So select the topo solid. And anywhere there's a floor slab that overlaps, we also have to cut that as well. So the slab in the garage and the slab in the basement. Again, we only had to do this floor slab once and it now looks correct in this section and in the cross section because this floor now is already cut against that topo solid. And you can see that in this 3D view that it's ha it's actually happening everywhere because we're actually able to see the cutout of the ground here including sort of the reverse of the strip footings and there's a little bit of a cutout this ground doesn't completely engage the bottom of the slab on grade which again is the problem I was mentioning previously so you can see there's still a few walls and, and strip footings that I haven't gotten to, but you get the idea at this point. One more thing that we'll do before we get onto the sidewalk and the driveway is add the grass layer. So my previous intro video for Revit, I talked about using the paint tool, which does work and it's still technically accurate that the finish and the material are, are, aren't properly understood by Revit, but we can add a really thin layer to the structure to represent grass. We can say that's a finish. We can pick grass. Maybe we make sure the shade is uh, something a little lighter colored than what it's sampling from the appearance where it has a particularly bad albedo. Uh, oh, and then we of course have to give it a thickness, so we'll just make it one inch thick so it's really thin. And now we have a grass layer and then the earth layer. So I'll reset this view and then if we go back to our site plan and we wanted to add the sidewalk and the driveway, we have to select the topo solid and then add a subdivide. And then here we could uh, basically create an enclosed area just like most things in Revit and then select finish. And then back in the 3D view it initially does something kind of odd where it makes this thing, it follows the surface but it's one foot thick and projects upward from the top of the site. So this can be made quite thin, but it cannot be made a minus number. And then of course we can add a material to this thing. So now that's set to concrete and then same thing for the driveway. And I'm not doing any super accurate numbers here. I'm just doing this quickly so you get the idea. And then like most things, if that's concrete um, or a material that I've already used, I can just copy this material name and paste it. I don't have to go into the material dialog and select it. So um, I guess maybe one last thing I'll point out is the new textures view, which is really nice. Um, it uses the actual material. So in this case, again, the grass is particularly dark and doesn't look great. But the building itself is really kind of nice. Um, I'd say this is kind of analogous to one of the modes of viewing a, a model in SketchUp where you're just seeing the texture without any shade added to it to try and make it look different around the corner. 
um, and it's not using any global illumination, which also tends to change the color or the appearance of the texture. You can still have shadows turned on. You can also have ambient shadows turned on. So if we go into the settings here, if this were a view that I was placing on a sheet, I might want to turn on smooth lines with anti-aliasing and then maybe ambient shadows to give it a little sense of depth. But that's it. That's a quick look at using the new Topo Solid command in Revit 2024. Thanks for watching.